all you in the YouTube for Educators class, this is my cognitive skills video. Um, today I'm going to discuss a key skill in science and just in life in general, and that's observation and how you can use observation to relate to other things. Um, first, some safety precautions here. Um, I'm doing two demonstrations, one working with fire, one working with chemicals. Make sure you wear goggles, you tie all hair and loose clothing back, and I don't recommend any of you do this if you are not trained in chemistry or some other pseudoscience. Um, when you're finished with all this, make sure you dispose of your chemicals properly and clean your work area and especially wash your hands and get chemicals off your hands. You don't want to get them in your mouth when you're eating. Okay, there's two types of observations I want to talk about. One is called qualitative, one is called quantitative. And as you might be able to determine from those words, qualitative comes from the word qua quality, quantitative comes from the word quantity. Quantitative is going to be things that are measured, numbers, things like length, width, temperature. Qualitative is going to involve color, texture, smell, taste, anything you can see with the senses. Um, in this demonstration, I'm going to work with two different setups. First, I'm going to work with the candle by itself, and then I'm going to work with it in the holder. This has nothing to do with our observations. All right? We're going to make just some quick observations based on this candle alone. First thing, I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to say, well, okay, basic observations with the senses. It's round. I'm feeling it. It's smooth. Now. I can also do my quantitative observations. It is 30 centimeters long or approximately 12 inches long, about one foot. The wick is two centimeters or about three quarters of an inch. Color, white, no smell. Um, if you're like my students, you taste the thing and tell me no taste, I'm not going to. Okay? Now, afterward, I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it back in the holder, which again has no relation to what we're doing here. And I'm going to light it and we're going to look at the different changes that happen from observations once I light it. Make sure I put my goggles. Okay. Right away the first thing I see is that obviously we're burning something here. The wick's changing colors from white to black. And normally when I do this at the class, this is one of the first lab I do during the year, they observe this for approximately five minutes while it's burning. We're going to go a little bit faster here. Already seeing wax melting off. Okay, so the texture is going to change. It's going to become a little more rough. Also, the size is going to change. Part of the wick is already about to break off. Wax is going to melt. It's going to become a different size. So if we wait a few minutes, which we're not going to do, um, in about two or three minutes, the length of the candle is going to go down about half an inch the length of the wick is just going to go down mere millimeters. Okay. Um, other things that I'm seeing here and, and observing that you can't is that um, there is a slight aroma being given off now. Obviously heat's being given off. I can observe, now I have a flame that is about, without catching my ruler on fire, about an inch and a quarter. Um, blue and orange, typical. Okay. All of these things are important. You know, it might just sound like something plain, but all of these observations make sense, and they all relate to the same idea here, okay? The last observations we're going to make are once it's blown out, okay? And I'm going to do that quickly. I don't know if you can see it, but you should be able to. That smoke's obviously being given off. The wig now is completely black. There's no white left to it, okay? I got some running from wax here. Causes this to not be as smooth anymore still. I'm going to measure my length again measure the length of my wick again. All of these things relate. Um, and at the end of the day, I can take this and I can figure out what I've observed now and what has become quantity, what has become quality. Quantitative, qualitative. The quantitative ones, again, length, width. I didn't, I didn't even measure width. I can measure all the way around here. I can measure the radius, diameter on the bottom. Um, I can even measure temperature if I want. All of those things are quantitative. Qualitative, I did the smell, the texture, I didn't do the taste, but you can if you so desire. All of those things are just as important. Put it all together, and we've just obviously observed a candle burning, but it's a lot more than that. And I hope you understand where I'm going with this, that observation is one of the biggest key skills in your entire life, and in science especially. And this, as chemistry teachers, is what we try to get across to our students, to never let anything go unnoticed. Okay. I'm going to take these off for a second so you can see me.
and I'm going to move to my second demonstration, which is going to relate a little differently. We're going to talk about the indicators of a chemical reaction and how observation relates to that. I'm going to show you what I have here is hydrochloric acid, which is in your stomach if you don't know that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put about two-thirds of an inch worth of hydrochloric acid into my test tube. And this is six molar, which is relatively well concentrated. That's enough. And I have a small piece of zinc in my hand, just your basic zinc, the same stuff they use to galvanize nails with. Okay. And when I put it in here, you're going to see a reaction happen, and a bunch of different things are going to happen. And we're going to go back to this, and I'm going to show you how it relates. So I want you to observe everything that happens here. As soon as I drop it in, it bubbles up like crazy. You can see it's smoking. It's going, it's going absolutely crazy in here. I'm trying to do it without just blocking it from you. Now, all this gas is being given off. You can see that happen. You see a bunch of bubbling, which is related to the same thing. What you can't see is this is really extremely hot right now, too. I can barely touch it. Okay. The zinc inside here is getting corroded like crazy. It's turning black. All right. Now, one other thing we're going to do is what's called a splint test. A splint test shows whether hydrogen gas is, is present and is being given off. Okay, I'm going to try to do this without burning myself here. If, it, if there is there, it should give off a little bit of a sound. It should give off a popping noise and a little bit of light, which you can see. If I do it again here in a second, as soon as it pops some more back up. Okay. Hopefully you're able to see and hear that. I'll try one more time here in a second. There. Okay. So what we've seen here is a bunch of different things, and I'm going to hold on to this because I got to dispose of it in a minute. But most most importantly, we're going to go back to four indicators of a chemical reaction: color change, precipitate form, heat, light, sound, energy given off, and gas given off. Well, here's what we saw. We saw. We saw, we witnessed, we observed gas given off. We saw light, heat, and sound, all three of them. These two in the splint test, this, you can't really observe, but I'm telling you it's happening because this is hot. No precipitate in this reaction. Color change on the metal. Three of our four. So I can uh, conclude just from my observations that a chemical reaction has now occurred. Okay. This is why observation is such an important skill. Um, and we use our senses to answer our question, was there a chemical reaction occurring? We use our senses to witness the candle burning, as simple as it might be. Okay? If you just take five minutes to stop and observe what's going on around you, you're going to live a lot longer and be a lot happier because you're going to notice a lot more things and it's, it's really going to help you get ahead in life. So that is the end of my presentation and I will see you all soon.